Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today we are going to discuss the dangers and threats associated with strong gusty conditions on takeoff and how to handle those. We're going to start by looking at the situation we currently have. We're standing here in Bornholm Air Airport and as we can see the wind is currently 240 at 34 gusting 44. Our runway direction is a runway 29, so if we enter the full wind, including the gusts in the wind section of the virtual performance tool, we get to see that we have a crosswind of 33 knots, which is exactly the crosswind limit of the Boeing 737. Once we've calculated the crosswind limit, we are then going to enter the same wind, but without the gusts, so that we get our most conservative calculation. So in this 240 at 34 we get a headwind of 22 knots and a crosswind of 26 knots. By default the performance tool is going to give us the most optimal takeoff profile in terms of economy. However in conditions like this we want to increase our takeoff thrust so what you can always do when you have gusts like these is you go to the rating and you select wind shear performance. If you do that you are going to get this wind shear precautions up here, advising you of some general wind shear procedures, and it is going to calculate a full 26k takeoff for you. Also, it will calculate the um, increased VR that you can use for your rotation. And basically, what this is for is when you would normally rotate at 33 knots, but you are encountering some strong gusts or wind shear at that moment, you can delay the rotation until reaching 144 knots. Note that if you have an actual wind shear encounter, the duration, uh, sorry, the rotation may not be delayed and you have to take the plane airborne straight away. Okay, so with our takeoff data calculated, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the general rotation and takeoff in gusty conditions. This is what the flight crew training manual says. For takeoff in gusty or strong crosswind conditions, use of a higher thrust setting than minimum required is recommended. That is basically what we've just calculated. When the prevailing wind is at or near 90 degrees to the runway, the possibility of wind shifts resulting in gusty tailwind components during rotation or lift off increases. During this condition, consider the use of thrust settings close to or at maximum takeoff thrust. The use of a higher takeoff thrust setting reduces the required runway length and minimizes the airplane exposure to gusty conditions during rotation, liftoff and initial climb. To increase tail clearance during strong crosswind conditions, consider using a higher VR if takeoff performance permits. This can be done by increasing VR speed to the performance limited gross weight rotation speed not to exceed the actual gross weight VR plus 20 knots. Set the V speeds for the actual gross weight Rotate at the adjusted higher rotation speed. This increased rotation speed results in an increased stall margin and meets takeoff performance requirements. Avoid rotation during a gust. If a gust is experienced near VR, as indicated by stagnant airspeed or rapid airspeed acceleration, momentarily delay the rotation. This slight delay allows the airplane additional time to accelerate through the gust and the resulting additional airspeed improves the tail clearance margin. Do not rotate early or use a higher than normal rotation rate in an attempt to clear the ground and reduce the gust effect because this reduces tail clearance margin. Limit control wheel input to that required to keep the wings level. Use of excessive control wheel increases spoiler deployment which has the effect of reducing tail clearance. All of these factors provide maximum energy to accelerate through gusts while maintaining tail clearance margins at liftoff. The airplane is in a side slip with cross controls at this point. A slow, smooth recovery from this side slip is accomplished after liftoff by slowly neutralizing the control wheel and rudder panels. That is the guidance from the flight crew training manual. So let's quickly talk about the crosswind limitations that we have for takeoff. When we did our earlier calculations, I told you that the crosswind limit for the 737 is 33 knots. However, that only applies to a dry runway and under certain conditions a wet runway. So, when the runway condition code is reported as 5, then your crosswind limit is normally 25 knots. However, it is permissible to increase this crosswind limit to 33 knots, provided that you are using flaps 5 or greater. 
the center of gravity is less than or equal to 25%, the standard runway width is at least 45 meters and the runway condition code is 5. So under these conditions a crossland limit of 33 knots is acceptable. With the runway condition code reported at 4 or the OPT condition good to medium the crossland limit is 22 knots. Runway condition code 3 gives you 20 knots crossland limit, condition code 2 gives 15 and at runway condition code 1 or 0 the takeoff is prohibited anyway. So, with that we have discussed all the theory. The last thing we want to discuss before we are actually going to take off is the wind shear escape maneuver. In crosswind conditions like these or in general gusty conditions it is always expected that you might encounter a wind shear. So what is the wind shear escape maneuver? Let's talk about it. You're going to press toga and rotate initially to 15 degrees, thereafter follow the flight director guidance. Firewall the thrust levers and disconnect the auto throttle. Very important here, disconnecting the auto throttle, otherwise it might reduce thrust automatically again. Be sure the speed brakes are retracted and do not change airplane configuration in terms of the landing gear or the flaps. Keep them in the position where they were. Once you are clear of wind shear, you can transition into a normal takeoff profile and at this point it would be very important to actually reduce your thrust quickly so that you avoid exceeding any flap placard limits. So setting the thrust to something like 90% is basically always going to work in the 737 and then you can retract the landing gear and the flaps on schedule. Alright, now that we've talked about all this, a gentle reminder here that when you are taking off you should apply light aileron input into the wind not to exceed about two units of control column deflection. So two units is roughly this. If you use more than two units then your spoilers are going to extend on the wings. However, do use as much aileron as you need in order to keep the wings level. That is very important. So those two units to avoid spoiler deflection are a good theory, but in practical terms you need to use as much aileron into the wind as is needed to avoid spoiler deflection. So I would say we are pretty much ready to go now. Let's release that parking brake and we are going to proceed on the runway heading, climbing altitude 4000 feet, timing and off we go. We've selected the full 26k takeoff as recommended and we keep in mind the delayed rotation VR of 144 knots for this one. Stabilized, set takeoff thrust. Takeoff thrust set, indication is normal. 80 knots, checked. V1, rotate. And there's currently no gust, so we can go straight away. And notice how much aileron input we need to keep the wings level. And now slowly neutralize the inputs. Okay, gear up, positive rate. It is gusty, but the plane is flying nicely. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through the Buy Me Coffee link that you can find in the video description below, or by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before they are released to the general public. For now, thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to welcome you all again on the next one.